Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to this uh, final session. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to, uh, uh, to, to open this session and to uh, join you in how we reflect on the last couple of days. I dare say many of you, like me, will be sort of thinking, what little nuggets can I capture to take back to the ranch? And uh, so what are my reflections that I'll spend a moment sharing with you? Um, they're a bit uncomfortable, actually. I feel a bit challenged by the talk of courageous leadership, by the talk of doing what's right rather than doing what others think is the right thing. I'm, I'm sort of thinking, how, do, how, do, how does one do that at the classroom level with all the pressures and the high stakes, accountability? How does one do that at middle leadership level, departmental level, within the office team and as a head? And, and I sort of think, yes, I, I, I believe it all. I agree with it all. It, it, it's right. It's right. But then I realized my other obligations, my family, uh, the mortgage. And so I'm challenged, and quite rightly so. I'm in that discomfort zone. So as I get the train away from here, how do I sort of square that circle? How do I find comfort from the discomfort? And of course, I realize I'm not on my own. I am not on my own. And much has been spoken about us working together, sharing accountability, not being smug knowers, and not being boastful about the outstanding label, and so on and so forth. But I then wonder whether we've learnt to be able to not be like we are. Have we learnt to be able to share accountability? Do we have the professional knowledge and the dispositions to be authentic in our collaboration rather than collaboration being on my terms? And how do we cope with a system and a culture that doesn't always seem to support that way of working? Well, of course, we, we, the SSAT, we are a membership organisation. We need to commit to supporting each other. The SSAT has had a renowned tradition for improvement through the framework of by schools, for schools. And very successfully has it done that. But I'm also at the moment reflecting that that must not become insular, or what I would call sector inward looking. And for me, the real significance of this conference has been how the platform in this hall and especially in the workshop sessions, there has been a definite and distinct partnership and collaboration between thinkers in universities and those of us thinking, working in schools. This is a key development for the future. Teaching is an intellectual challenge. It's an intellectual activity. It is a profession of continual learning, learning new ways to engage learners, continually learning about relationship management within the classroom and within the staff room, learning to cope with how we help young people truly assimilate knowledge. It's fun, it's hard work, and it requires resilience. And the call of action that I have heard, I am interpreting as a call to enjoy our autonomy, to reclaim our professional identity, find our confidence. As Claxton, say, Claxton says, as, as Guy says, 
Let us avoid allowing the awe to prevail in our discourse. Instead, promote conversations that are and ones. Please, no more false binaries. Brian Lightman's partnership and collaboration, that sharing, what does that mean at the classroom level for how we share for whole school improvement? And what does it mean at school leadership level for system improvement? As Bill Lucas reminded us this morning, the professional capital within the system is expandable. That idea of it being expandable, I find liberating, I find motivating and empowering, especially if it's done in, with that transparency that he so eloquently illuminated to us this morning. Those are my reflections. I wish you well in your own reflections. We have now the opportunity to learn collaboratively. We have the chance to work together in an improving, in an improving rather than proving paradigm. Let's do it. Thank you.